Ben, there's an angel. There's an angel. There's an angel. She saw it too. Yeah, so I saw it. I oh, saw it. it. Tell was, me what he looked like. It was like. ten foot tall, our feet either side of our bed. So it was, he was standing either side of our on bed. On the bed. On yeah. the bed. And on the bed. On the bed. I heard a dog's in a bed. <laughs> no, this, this this was a ten foot angel. You'd be screaming too. You would. It was you know a brilliant bright light, white sash, golden golden uh, white robe, golden sash and this intensity. Now, my guests are from Australia. I've never been to Australia, although you named an important city after me, Sydney. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we did. Uh, we but, did. Uh, uh, my understanding is I don't think of big revivals and big moves of God in Australia, I, I last I checked, they had about, in their whole entire history, five smaller type revivals. Yes. And you guys start out with 50 people and a word from God. And would you believe in Australia, from all over, even other countries, 20,000 people went to this move of God? But I have to take you back to one of the major starting points in your life. I wish I had had such a starting point. Mm. But mm. You're, you're in bed, you're asleep. By the way, had you ever seen an angel before this? I had never seen an angel, no. Did you think you ever would? No, in fact, someone said to me, if you ever see an angel, make sure you ask its name and its mission. And I thought, oh, that's really handy. I'll put that on the fridge next to the, if there's a power cut, if something <laughs> happens, I'll know what to refer to. <laughs> so you're minding your own business, both of you, yeah. sleeping. Tell me what happened then. <laughs> well, like all good encounters, suddenly in the middle of the night, I woke up with this power, Electricity is the only way to describe it, but it seems inadequate. There was power and electricity surging up and down my body, and I woke up screaming. And I don't mean a gentle scream. I woke up full-blown screaming why, at the top of my Why were lungs. you screaming? There was I'm just such understand. the intensity the intensity of the encounter, the intensity of the power that was in the room. I, I was just shaking and screaming. I could not scream any louder. And while I was doing that, while I'm screaming, suddenly I notice my wife is hitting me. And Why she's, were you hitting her? She's hitting He's me. a nice guy. <laughs> and she's like, Ben, 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 there's an angel. There's an angel. There's an angel. She saw it too? Yeah. So I saw it. I uh, saw it. it tell was, me what he looked like. It was like. 10 foot tall, our feet either side of our bed. So it was, he was standing either side of our on bed. On the bed. On yeah. the bed. And on the bed? On the bed. I heard a dog's in a bed. <laughs> no, this, this was. A 10 foot <laughs> angel? You'd be screaming too. You would. It was, you know, a brilliant. Brilliant bright light, white sash, golden, golden uh, white robe, golden sash, and this intensity of glare just staring at us. And I immediately, this is why we're we're yelling because I immediately knew this is a mark a moment. There was a a uh, intensity to it, a seriousness to this encounter that we didn't immediately understand, but we knew immediately our lives will never be the same again. But then something happened to you that is actually an earmark of this current move of God yeah. that's on planet Earth. Sure. There's something I don't hear much about yeah. in on TV anywhere. Yeah. Mm. But it's an earmark of what God is doing. Yeah. Yes. And that has to do with the fear of the Lord. Yes. Well, how did it affect you? Uh, there was such a weightiness to the fear of the Lord that entered our bedroom in that moment. You could feel it. It was tangible. There was a thickness to it. The air was thick with, with, it was more than the awe and wonder. There was a fear of the Lord, literally not a scary fear, but a fear of his bigness, his holiness. And I was very aware in that moment, Sid, that, that holiness matters. That character matters. That's such a, what, what, what? That is such yeah. an important statement. I don't want it to slip by you. Yeah. Sure. That fear of the Lord matters. Character matters. Sure. Now, did you have that same feeling, Ben? Yeah, I, I felt like if I put my, my pinky 
if I move my pinky wrong, this is the intensity. I felt like if I breathed wrong, as if that was possible, that I was going to explode. I felt like I would literally blow up in the room, and that was it. And I was uh, uh, intensely aware that our actions matter yes. before a holy God. And it lingered with us mm. for weeks and months afterwards. It lingers with us still to today when we start talking about it. I can, I can feel immediately it feel it now. You know, it, it, it lingered to the point of there was a purging of our hearts. Well, what would happen if you would start reverting to your old ways, maybe a little gossip? Uh, I can uh, feel immediately a tug in my heart of that same encounter of the Lord saying, Jody, quit that now. Mm. Lean in right now to my presence, my holiness. And, you know, it even affected our speech. Yeah. We couldn't talk for... Um, Weeks. We barely spoke to each other for weeks, which sounds really funny, but even to say, how are you? How's your day? We'd be checking our attitudes, checking our hearts, checking, do I mean that? Is there any hidden agenda in our hearts behind our words? And it was such a, a purifying and a purging at the beginning of a new season of our life. I want you to look in the camera and I want yeah. you to tell people how to yield to God because in during this show, there is going to be an outpouring of the greater glory. Okay. Explain how they can yield. There is. You know, I always like to tell people that I think we know we can resist the presence of God. And so if you can resist, we can do the opposite and actually receive. And so it comes down to just a posturing of our heart yeah. just to say, OK, I'm going to stop resisting and I'm just going to actually receive. And it really is just about relaxing and yielding ourselves to say, God, come and do yeah. whatever you want to do. And, you know, sometimes I find that many people, they don't feel worthy of that because of their sin. Well, this is exactly why Jesus died. When, when they would bring the lamb every year to come and be sacrificed, they didn't look at the priest to see if he had any spots or blemish. They actually looked at the lamb and they found that the lamb was pure. Then that was going to be okay. It wasn't about the people's spots. It was about the lambs. And Jesus is the lamb of God without spot or blemish. And he has made you worthy to receive from his presence. So I want you to yield to receive yeah. all that God has for you. Now, one night, again, they're minding their own business, and a hundred noisy, snorting horses <laughs> show up right outside of Ben and Jody's bedroom. When, you know, I'm, I'm, what, how does that happen? Do you live in a, in a big farm? No, we, we live in a, it was in a suburb. In I'll tell you what, we'll be right back next. <laughs> Now, this should not happen to you. Jody is in her living room with her daughter. And all of a sudden, the uh, sliding door slides open. And what did you see? Yeah, I saw a spirit of death, a demonic, dark uh, a spirit that landed at our back door. And immediately, What both, did it look like? It was darker than dark, bodily form, but darker than dark. And both uh, myself and my daughter, we immediately sensed it and saw it straight away because we both looked towards where the door and we in the physical saw the back door start to open. There was a tangible sense of, of uh, fear and death. Mm. And then right after that though, you know, Thank God for Jesus, because right after that, I, you know, in, in that darkest fear that t we tangibly felt and saw, immediately we saw a bright white light drop immediately at the back door. And uh, immediately that darkness left. There was a shift of the atmosphere. There was even an impartation of that ability to decree a shift of an atmosphere. And, uh, you know, I'm reminded even now of John 10, 10, God came to give us life and life in abundance and that immediate sense of, of fear. And I can feel it even here now, many that have been plagued by a fear of death, a fear, just even 
even that fear that plagues them. You know, God is releasing that and breaking pray, pray that. that. Yeah, well, I just speak it right over you now, wherever you are in this audience or at home right now. If you've been plagued by uh, just uh, uh, torturous thoughts and fear and a fear of uh, early death over you right now, I just break that hold, that demonic assignment in the name of Jesus. And I decree a John 10, 10 impartation of life, life, life. You will walk out the days that you are made for in Jesus' name. I release impartation of expectation of good in Jesus' name. Ha. Now, you two, again, you're sleeping. And right outside of your bedroom window, what do you hear, Ben? Yeah, so this was only a couple of days after that. And so we're in the middle of this season that's, it feels like everything's coming against us. All of a sudden, it feels like I, I hear the sound of a hundred horses come just running up to the bedroom window. Our bedroom window was up against the road. And so I hear the sound of snorting and breathing and hooves and- blah, 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 blah. Are you hearing this too yes. or no? No, I'm hearing it too. It woke us up. And, right, and they come running up to the window. I jump out of bed, fling open the curtain, expecting to be confronted yeah. by all these men on horses, and it's just silent. There's nothing. And the Lord speaks to me. He says, Ben, the armies of the Lord are encamped around you. <laughs> then, when you had that visitation from the angel, <sighs> God spoke to you, mm. what was imparted to you? What was it? Well, it was a commissioning to us to pour out the oil of his presence and power in the nations. And the angel was an angel of awakening. It was the angel of awakening. And, and it came with this commissioning to us. And, and overnight, everything changed in our lives. Mm. Yeah. It's this, uh, there was a scripture God gave you uh, yeah. paraphrase it for me. Yeah, in Zechariah 4, he said, these are the two who are called to pour out golden lamp oil worldwide. Mm. And it's a picture in Zechariah 4 of the oil running down the golden pipes to the, to the lampstand, which is the church, and keeping the fire burning in the church. That oil lights the fire and keeps it burning. Yeah. Uh, not just pour out oil. You're in Fiji and you hear the most marvelous singing. Yes. Tell me about this. Yeah, so I was leading worship at the time. We were there for as part of 50 nights of revival that happened. Yeah. And in the middle of the worship, I'm just in a bit of a prophetic flow, playing the guitar and singing. And I hear this singing start to happen. And it's not singing I'd heard before. And I'm looking around, I'm thinking, where is that coming from? No one was on stage singing. No one in the audience was, was singing it. And the Fijians sing beautifully, but this is, wasn't coming from anyone. And I realized what was going on. And I knew the angels were singing and so were you, were you the only one hearing this no every single person there was hearing and so I actually I said to everybody guys the angels are singing just just everyone just listen no one sing or talk and just listen and the whole meeting every person you didn't have to squint your ears to try and hear it was overwhelming there was three yeah. angelic harmonies that were singing along with me it was, it was incredible. And the glory of God came into the room so powerfully. It got very precious and very holy. And, and, the, and he just, the Lord just began to move and the power of God, people started falling out and getting healed. It was, it was glorious, it was glorious. It was a powerful time. Mm. What well, this pouring out the oil, that when you, when you had what's called, the, why was it called the Pineapple Revival? <laughs> well, it took place in a tourist attraction in Australia called the Big Pineapple. And this is a, a big function center on a pineapple farm with a 40 foot fiberglass pineapple, uh, as you can see out the front, this huge pineapple, you could go up inside that, but the whole of Australia knew about it as the Big Pineapple. And so everyone started calling it the Pineapple Revival. Well, what was the earmark of this move of God? Well, I, yeah. Well, contagious hunger. There was contagious hunger that was just poured out. You mean you can catch the hunger you from God. You can catch it. And you too, when that oil is poured out, you too, spread the disease. <laughs> yeah. Well, I often, I often say, Sid, that if you can catch a cold, then why can't we have faith to catch the fire of God? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
you know, a lot of stuff happens in their home. In their home, <laughs> Ben and Jody have created an atmosphere of heaven on earth. And they can teach you how to create a door or a portal for heaven to invade your home. Uh, do you want this? I know you do. <laughs> Through Ben Yu's powerful brand new book, When God Breaks In, Ben will help you access secrets to a lifestyle of tangible encounters with God. Each chapter releases a new wave of spiritual awakening. Discover how you can partner with the armies of the Lord encamped around you. Keep applying fresh oil to the fire of your heart. Respond to a divine invitation of signs, wonders, and miracles. Position yourself for heavenly commissioning. On these pages, you will encounter God, who wants to be in your life in an unending stream of creative ways. This is a book that contained an encounter that contained an impartation for the exact same thing to happen in your life. You will also receive Ben Hughes' exclusive two-part audio CD teaching series, How to Shift the Atmosphere for Breakthrough. In it, you will be given the keys to have a fresh encounter with God every day. Learning how to have these encounters are necessary in order to help you grow closer to God, refresh your body, soul, and spirit, understand and fulfill your supernatural destiny. Ben also releases many powerful prayers to usher you into new encounters with God. Plus, you will receive Ben's anointed audio CD worship soaking album, Heavenly Atmospheres. He will lead you into your own encounter with God. Receive a fresh touch from the Lord as you listen, soak, and enjoy the very presence of God for yourself. Don't miss out on getting Ben Hughes' brand new book, When God Breaks In, and his anointed two-part audio CD teaching set, How to Shift the Atmosphere for Breakthrough, plus his audio CD soaking worship album, Heavenly Atmospheres. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9631. Call or write today. Now, I have been caught in the rain. I don't know about you, <laughs> but this is ridiculous. You're inside an enclosed mall, and it starts raining on you. <laughs> Explain. Yes, I was walking through the mall in Brisbane, Australia one day, and I started feeling this dripping of all places on my inside right ankle. This, this just, exactly. just hitting my, hitting my ankle, and I thought, what on earth is going on? I knew, <laughs> I knew my bladder was intact. Everything, everything was okay. I'm like, God, if this is you, would you do it somewhere else? And and said, as soon as I said that, it started dropping on my head and on my hand. Okay, I have felt rain, but I have never been soaked. It, <laughs> it's never made me wet. But I, yeah. it feels exactly like rain. Yes. But you're inside your car. The windows are <laughs> closed. There's no holes in the roof. <laughs> and what happens? Well, simply, it begins to physically rain inside our yeah. car. And both Jody and I have physical water beginning to fall on us. So we'd been yeah. experiencing that a lot, where there was no water and we'd feel this rain continuing to fall. Yeah. But then we were driving out of this parking lot and the rain started to physically fall on us inside our car. Now, yeah. what does the rain mean to you? Yeah. Well, you know, the Lord had really given us a word from 1 Kings 18, where Elijah hears the sound of the abundance yeah. of rain. He hears the sound of heavy rain. And of course, it wasn't yet physically raining, but there was a, there was, he could hear the sound of that rain coming. And so the Lord began to speak to us to release this word everywhere we went, that the rain of his presence, the revival rain, yeah. the outpouring of his spirit was coming. And those who had ears to hear knew that it was coming. And, and in your meetings, did people actually report they felt the same thing you guys yes. did, the rain? Yes, many people have. We've had many reports of physical rain that people have, like us, felt water drop on them. Others just feel it like they're standing in a shower of rain. People are, you know, seeing lightning, hearing thunder, hearing the sound of rain. Recently, uh, you know, we ministered at a church and right after we left, they rang us and said in their prayer meeting that all of them heard the sound. We'd been prophesying the sound of heavy rain, the sound of revival being poured out. And they rang us to say, all, everyone in their their prayer meeting heard heavy rain on the building. When they walked outside from their prayer meeting, it was bone dry, not a drop outside. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone heard it. Do you, 
You're a dreamer, too. Yes. And God gave you dreams about the outpouring of the greater glory. Yes. Tell me what you know. Yeah, well, years ago I had a dream about a tsunami wave coming, the greater glory tsunami wave being poured out. No, I think of that out. tsunami wave in Asia where it, um, I mean, it yes. was awful. it was horrible. So in the reverse, <laughs> it's powerful, the power of God being poured out over the nations like a tsunami wave, but a, a wave of His glory and fire being poured out around the nations. And, uh, you know, just recently we were traveling in New England only a few weeks back, and I had a, a vision of it uh, raining three times. And in my vision, I knew God was saying, you know, uh, it's been poured out once, it's been poured out twice, and I'm pouring it out a third time. And I knew He was saying there is a third awakening on our shores right now that it's begun to rain in the Spirit again. Uh, I'll pray for people right now. Yeah. Well, Father God, I just pray right now that in each and every heart that can hear our voice, I release now faith for an outpouring of your glory, Father, ha, for revival reign, for awakening, for that breaker anointing breakthrough. We speak over you. Now is the time of your encounter. Now is the time of hunger. Ha. Now is the time of pouring out of your glory, wow. Father. We break off any, uh, just where the enemy has told us to put our expectations into a future date. We break that off right now and we say now, pour it out, Father. Huh? Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yes, yes, and God, oh. I thank you that right now you are breaking yeah. off timidity, off the church, off the body of Christ. You are breaking yeah. off that spirit of timidity, sure. that, that a boldness is not a gift. It's not a personality, but it's an identity of the righteous. The righteous are as bold bold as a lion. And so I release that boldness over you right now. Like Jody said, the time is now and I release yeah. the boldness for now. Thank you, Jesus. Release the breakthrough. Yeah, Father, sure. I thank you for the breakthrough. Lord, and we just declare a shift right yeah. now over every circumstance. Sure. God, I thank you for that spirit Jesus. of breakthrough, that you are the God of the breakthrough, that that's who you are, and you come like a rushing water. And I release that rushing water of the yeah. spirit of breakthrough over every circumstance. Yeah. Lord, your word says that the hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. And so we introduce our hills to the presence of the Lord yes. right now. And I thank you that they are becoming Jesus. level ground. Ah. They're being completely melted away right now yeah. in Jesus' mighty name. Oh. Breakthrough! Ah, thank you. Your breakthrough, it's right now. Click here to learn how to access Heaven's treasury for your miracle. And I'll see you in the next video.